Let's suppose you're considering two mutually exclusive investments, say project A and project B. And so they're mutually exclusive, which means that you have to pick one. Now let's suppose that the internal rate of return of A is greater than the internal rate of return of B. And so if you try to make your decision based on the internal rate of return or the IRR, you might say, hey, you know, I think I should go with project A because it has the higher IRR. Well, it turns out that in certain situations, this can lead you to make the wrong decision because even if the IRR of A is more than the IRR of B, the NPV or the net present value of A may very well be less than the net present value of B, which means that you may end up making the wrong decision because in terms of net present value, project B would have added more value to your firm. So this would have been the better project to go with. Now, one instance in which this inconsistency between what IRR is telling you to do and what NPV is telling you to do, one instance in which this inconsistency can arise is when the projects that you are considering have different timing with respect to their cash flows. Let me try and illustrate using an example. So let's suppose you're considering two projects, A and B. They're mutually exclusive, which means that you have to pick one. They both require the same amount of initial investment, which is $12,000, so they're similar in scale. Now here's the difference. Project A yields a whole lot of cash inflows earlier on in its life. So think of Project A as an extension of an existing product line. Maybe Kellogg's decides that instead of brand plus, they want to launch a brand plus plus. And so it's an established product. People are receptive of it earlier on. So they buy a whole lot of it. You get a whole lot of cash inflows earlier on. But then eventually people start losing interest or maybe competition starts coming in. And so you lose cash inflow. So you don't get a whole lot of cash inflows later in the product's life. Project B, on the other hand, is maybe something more innovative. You spend $12,000. Uh, and then you have to spend maybe $1,000 marketing it or maybe another $1,000 marketing it by the end of year two or people are just not catching on to it. So maybe Kellogg's decides they want to launch a cereal with like pineapple, bananas and kale in it. People don't really like it in the beginning, but it's innovative. Maybe you get a patent on it. So by the end of the third year, people become really health conscious and they're like, OK, yeah, we really want to buy this. And so a whole lot of cash inflow start coming in later. So five thousand dollars by the end of year three, sixteen thousand dollars by the end of year four. And let's suppose that here you are at time period zero and you're deciding, should I do this or this? Now, this is the main difference then. Project A is yielding cash inflows earlier on in its life. Project B is yielding cash inflows later on in this life. So this is the difference in timing. Now, if you actually calculate the internal rate of return of these two projects, and I've done this using the equal to IRR functionality in Excel, then it turns out that project A has an internal rate of return of 17%. Project B, on the other hand, has an internal rate of return of 12% which means that if you were inclined to make your decision based on IRR, you might say, okay, I wanna go with project A because it has the higher IRR. However, if I told you that the discount rate for these projects is 5%, and let's assume that both projects are equally risky, so the same 5% applies to both, then if I asked you to calculate the net present value of project A, you would say, okay, that's basically taking the negative 12,000 over here, and then I take the next 8,000 and discount it at 5%. And so you know how this works. You go all the way till the very end for the last 500. You discount that at 1.05 raised to the power four. And if you do this math, the NPV for project A would come out to about 2,293. If you went ahead and repeated this exercise for project B, so NPV of B, and I won't bore you with writing the whole equation down, uh, this basically involves taking a discounted value of these cash inflows, you'll find out that at 5%, the NPV of project B will come out to about 3,000 
623, which means that if you were inclined to make your decision based on NPV, then project B has the higher NPV. Uh, realize that this difference uh, between NPV and IRR is occurring for the following reason. Your discount rate is rather low, it's 5%, which means that you are not discounting Project B's high cash inflows, which are coming later on in the life of the project. You're not discounting them at the very high rate. In other words, future is quite valuable to you, so you're putting a lot of value in this 16,000, even if it's uh, much distant. Uh, it turns out that if your discount rate starts increasing, eventually the NPV of A will become higher. In fact, here's a table to show you exactly what's going on. If I show you what the NPV of project A and B are for different discount rates, it turns out that for rather low discount rates, like 5%, NPV of B is more than the NPV of A. So 3623 is more than 2293. Even if the discount rate were 6%, 7%, 8%, which are still rather low numbers, we would find that project B is more valuable than project A. It is only when discount rates start becoming higher and higher, like 9, 10, and so on and so forth, then all of a sudden, NPV says, you know what, project A is better. So at 10%, for example, the NPV of project A is 1249, which is higher than the 949 for project B. And so this is the difference between NPV and IRR. NPV is basically telling you, look, the project that you should pick is kind of dependent on what your discount rate is. If your discount rates are somewhere between zero and you know somewhere like 8%, then project B is the better project. However, if your discount rates are higher, like nine plus, then project A is better. But notice that IRR did not have any such contingency. You just said, oh, IRR of A is greater, 17%. IRR of B is 12%, so A is always better because IRR of A is always greater than IRR of B, but NPV is not saying something like that. In fact, you can also see this graphically. So here what I'm doing is sort of uh, plotting the NPV profiles of project A and B. NPV profile is simply us plotting uh, these values where for different discount rates, we're showing what the NPVs of project A and B are. And so notice that as the discount rates are increasing, NPV of both projects A and B are falling. However, for certain discount rates, like right around here, uh, if you look at this, which is somewhere around between eight and 9%, uh, if you actually take a look at these discount rates and that for these discount rates, this blue line is plotting the NPV of project A and, it's, and you can see that for these discount rates, the NPV of A is lower, but the NPV of B is higher. And so this is basically confirming what we're saying over here, that for rather low discount rates, the NPV of B is more than the NPV of A. It's only for high discount rates, like beyond 9% approximately, that all of a sudden, the NPV of B becomes lower and NPV of A becomes higher. So this is uh, sort of suggesting the same thing, that the project that you wanna choose depends on what your discount rate is, but notice that IRR is unequivocally saying that A is better, and we can see that graphically as well. Notice that IRR is the discount rate at which NPV becomes equal to zero, and so if you look at where this NPV profile for project A is intersecting the horizontal axis, this basically represents the IRR of project A, which as we know is about 17%, as you can see that over here, whereas this represents the IRR of B, and so this point is always greater than this point, so IRR of A is always greater than IRR of B, which means that IRR would always tell you, look, go with A, but as we know that NPV would not say something like that, it kind of depends on what the discount rate is. And so this is where 
the inconsistency between IRR and NPV can arise because of the difference in the timing of the two cash flows. Uh, there's a name that we give to this rate where the where sort of the decision rule changes. This is known as the crossover rate, the crossover rate. And as the name suggests, basically when your discount rate exceeds the crossover rate, that is where your decision changes. So before this point, project B is better. After this point, project A is better. And so in a follow-up video, I'm going to show you how you can try and remedy this inconsistency uh, that is arising between IRR and NPV by calculating something called the incremental cash flows and the incremental internal rate of return of project B.